Welcome back to the Anxiety Slayer podcast. I'm Shan Vanderleek here with my longtime friend and co-host, Ananga Sivir. This week, we're talking about how to care for yourself if you suffer with social anxiety. We'll also discuss holiday season challenges and first responder series course offering designed to support all who suffer in social settings. Welcome back, Ananga. Hi, Shan. I'm incredibly grateful that we're having this conversation today and the timing just couldn't be better. Social anxiety is, well, it kicks into pretty high gear during the holiday season, that's for sure. Yeah, it certainly does. It can really bring a lot of nervous anticipation about social invitations that we might not feel at all comfortable with. And let's, let's begin today by discussing the question that we hear most about social anxiety. Yeah, the thing we hear most in our group and other messages coming into us is, does anybody else feel this way? Is it just me that gets anxiety attacks at a crowded event? Or am I the only one who can't eat in front of other people? These kinds of questions are what really concern people with social anxiety. Is it just me? Am I alone? What's wrong with me? And our answer is no. (laughs) You are not alone and you are not the only one. Social anxiety is common, and it's becoming increasingly more common in our loud and fast society and with social media-driven certain expectations that we're all facing. As a matter of fact, social anxiety is the third most common mental health challenge in the United States, with affecting over 15 million American adults. Yeah, so there's comfort in knowing that we're not alone, but we can do better than that. We can start learning how to care for ourselves, how to calm social anxiety. And EFT tapping and bark flower remedies are two very effective ways to do that and to address personal challenges like the things we really dread. And I certainly used to dread in my youth at social events, shaking, going red, feeling hot, um, worrying that people are going to notice, fear of speaking in front of others, not feeling comfortable making eye contact concerns about feeling judged, or just simply feeling like you want to run out the room, which is something I have done on a number of occasions. That just made me think of a time when, in my prior professional life, I often had to uh, teach groups of people or make presentations in all different sizes of groups. It could be one-on-one, it could be you know, one-to-many. And on occasion, I would just have a complete, uh, I guess, I guess what you would call a hot flash, even though that wouldn't be a, a normal thing to expect to experience at that time. Mm. <laughs> and just so many times try to power through it, but you can't, you know, when you, <laughs> when your face is beat red and you're <laughs> sweating and you're like, oh man, you know, the timing is just awful. I would have to excuse myself and go to the bathroom and run my wrists under the water. And, and again, that's a little bit different than social anxiety, but what, what I'm bringing forward about that is, is because it happened, uh, I would often be concerned that it would happen again, which would set me up for more uh, social anxiety experiences in the future, because you don't want that to happen when you're the one that everybody has eyes on. Yeah, absolutely. And the wonderful thing about the development of EFT tapping is nowadays, if we feel like that, we can go to the restroom and certainly run our wrists under cold water, take some deep breaths, but we can follow an SOS guided tapping session that will really help us feel calm and confident in just a few minutes. Three to five minutes is all it takes to get that escalating anxiety down, to stop an anxiety attack if it's trying to kick off. And then we can return knowing that we've come through it. We've conquered the experience Mm -hmm. and we can go back in feeling okay, which gives us something we know what to do. As one of our listeners said in a a wonderful review she wrote for our anxiety tax course, I can talk myself off the ledge. So that's a fantastic thing to be able to do. And then we don't get that follow up, those 
kind of aftershocks of, oh my God, what if this happens again? And then our mind starts to build this narrative of all the things that could then go wrong down the line. And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And many people who experience social anxiety suffer in silence. They believe their fears to be irrational, that they are at fault. Our mind can really do a number on us, but studies show that social anxiety is fully treatable. And we know this, it's a fully treatable condition that it can be overcome. If you have the right support, you're in a beautiful place to be on the other side of recovery before you know it. And that's what our course is all about. It's why we put it together. We, we want to give effective support to anyone suffering with social anxiety in the comfort of their own home or in the bathroom if need be or <laughs> in a guest room or you know, wherever it is you are to give you exactly what you need to help you feel more calm and relax. Yeah, because it tends to be such a, a private and painful anxiety. I can remember feeling so in myself with it. You know, there's something wrong with me. People are going to notice. I, it's just such an awful anxiety that really erodes your self-confidence, your self-esteem. So having support that can come to you wherever you are, you know, you might be away on a trip or you might be on a plane or a train or, as you said, in the restroom. Wherever you are, you can just put your headphones in and follow the guided tapping sessions, follow the teachings, follow the tips and tools, and really be able to talk yourself off the ledge, really be able to bring the anxiety down, feel more calm, more confident, more in control. Let's discuss the two root causes of social anxiety. I think it's important for our listeners to know where this is coming from. Yeah, I think it's important to share that neither of these are a disorder or a character flaw. Both the root causes of social anxiety, one being our nature, and second, past experiences, both can be supported and relieved. So if we look at the first one, nature, statistics show that one third of us are introvert by nature. I certainly am. And in the course, there's a discussion, Shan, with you and I talking about Susan Cain's wonderful book, Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking. And we both really discussed at length our experiences and realizing that we're both quite introvert by nature. That book truly was my gateway to understanding that I am an introvert. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but it was, wow. Anyway, such a, such a great book. I'm glad that we're sharing that conversation. Yeah, it was a great discussion and, a, and a, an eye-opener for a lot of people, including us. So introverts are the quieter third, the ones who like small groups or one-to-one -one interactions, who like to read, walk in nature, listen to music, and they're happy in the quiet comfort of our own homes. Now, that's very different to feeling that we're stuck in our own home. It, it's important to understand that introversion isn't a flaw. We live in a very extrovert-driven society, which we talk about in depth in the course. And sometimes the louder quoting of our society kind of set up this expectation that we may feel under. But introverts have their own wonderful qualities. So that lesson in the course is called Amazing Introverts. <laughs> it's not <laughs> a character flaw. Then also looking at nature, Ayurveda, which we often discuss in the podcast, India's ancient science of life, reveals that there are three different mind-body types. One of these types, called vata, is more prone to anxiety than the others. Vata types are disturbed by noise, movement, change, and they tend to be more self-conscious or more nervous socially. The vata type can feel shaky and nauseous under duress. And I remember in my youth, feeling continually nauseous and very, very shaky, visibly shaky. So it's a great relief for me when I started learning this information. But again, it's not a flaw. It's not that the Vata type isn't a good type to be. Vata well-managed is fantastic. It's a wonderful place to be. The Vata type is also funny, creative, quick-witted. There are few people you can find that are funnier than a balanced Vata. Um, I have a couple of vatas in my family that I enjoy immensely. They are just so quick at observing life, so very, very funny. They're adaptable. They're wonderful company when they're in an environment that doesn't throw them off balance. Right. So being, being vata isn't a bad thing. It can be a wonderful thing. 
And Ayurveda teaches us how to understand the cards we've been dealt as our mind-body type and how to play them well. So self-understanding and self-compassion is key. I think we should also bring up the importance of knowing how to eat and live, and live according to Ayurveda, because it's going to help us get the very best out of our nature. Knowing that we're prone to anxiety invites compassion. And along with that understanding, we have the opportunity to explore the many, many things we can do to support ourselves, to feel less anxious, nervous, or shaky, socially, or anywhere. And this is why if we know how to live, if we know how to eat, if we know how to care for ourselves, these, these are all resources for us to, ah, I know what to do in this situation. I know how to care for myself. I know right now that having caffeine isn't good for me. I know right now that if I'm going to go out in a windy environment, I'm going to oil up before I go. All of these just little tips and practices that we've been sharing with you over the years make all the difference. It's that simple. And also just the simple understanding of, of who we are and being okay with who we are. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you might have a sparrow and a crow on a branch of a tree. If you're a sparrow, be a sparrow. If you're a crow, be a crow. So it's, <laughs> it's when we're trying to be what we're not. Or something we're that we're to, not, right. Something we're not or something that we think is expecting or expected of us. We need to be at home with who we are. If we're vata, we're vata. No vata. Know how to manage it well. Know how to nourish it, love it, care for it, and, and bloom with it. Because vata is a wonderful, wonderful type when you know how to live it well. And the other root cause of social anxiety are, is past negative social experiences. We all have them. Fear of, fear of humiliation or rejection are two huge fears that most people will do anything to avoid. And they're very real, and they often sit at the root of social anxiety. Sometimes that fear has a basis in in protecting us, and that protection might not seem obvious, like feeling anxiety when you get close to the edge of a cliff, but fear and social anxiety might come from a memory. If we have felt humiliated or rejected in a group setting in the past, anxiety will manifest as a warning to us. When the symptoms of anxiety show in our body as shallow breathing or a fast heart, shaking or sweating, or our subconscious mind may be sensing danger, right? Which increases our adrenaline and other stress hormones, which trigger symptoms. Yeah, this is something we touched on in our free Anxiety Slayer Starter course, understanding the fear of the fear. And this is a really important teaching for overcoming social anxiety. Occasionally, very occasionally, we get a letter from somebody saying, tapping isn't working for me. Usually we get letters saying, wow, tapping works great. I love it. Very occasionally, somebody will say it's not working for me. And nine times out of 10, this is the reason. It's because a part of us believes it's not safe to go forward. So really important with addressing social anxiety to be thorough and to know how to clear and make peace with past negative social experiences. So many of these things just come up like a stack of cards, flashcards coming up in our minds, things we wish we hadn't said, things we wish we hadn't done, things that we look back on as terrible mistakes or terrible decisions. But the truth is we do the best we can in the moment. Right. We learn as we grow, but being able to make peace with those experiences helps EFT tapping work for us. Otherwise, we're pushing our face into a situation that we're just don't feel comfortable with. We need to be able to understand that it's safe. We need to be able to look at what's different this time. What do I know now? What have I learned now? And be able to use tapping to help us get there. Tapping is an easy practice to learn. Fortunately, once we understand all of this, we can use EFT tapping to diffuse the pain and trauma of the last negative social experience that we had and come to The point of telling us, telling our mind, hey, thank you for your concern, but I've got this. I know how to handle things differently this time. That is such a key conversation to have with your own mind, to have with that inner critic, because just because you had a really negative 
experience doesn't mean you have to have it again. And once you know how to take care of yourself and how to practice EFT tapping, you can clear painful memories and feel more calm and in the present in any social situation. And you can learn exactly how to do all of this inside our course. The thing with EFT tapping is that it's extremely easy to learn to use and apply. A five-year-old child can learn how to use it. But in situations like social anxiety and anxiety attacks, we need to know how to use it well and how to apply it to these situations where our subconscious mind is telling us, don't go there, you'll get hurt, where the subconscious mind is saying, you know, you remember this happened the last time. Humiliation is about the most painful thing we can feel, along with rejection. So when we've had a bad past experience, our mind sends us a warning in, and it feels like a growing sense of unease and anxiety that it just doesn't feel safe to go there again. And if we try and push through that, we can start to really feel more and more uncomfortable. And how that tends to manifest in us is that we think, what's wrong with me? And we feel inadequate. And we'll say things like, I know it's not rational, but I, I can't deal with it. This is how I feel. And then we come back to collapsing in on ourselves with loss of self-respect and growing feelings of inadequacy. And this really is the key. It's this pattern that's running beneath the surface of our awareness that you got hurt before, don't go there again. So learning how to diffuse that with EFT tapping, it's, it's magic. There are so, so many ways you can apply tapping if you're learning it from somebody that's experienced with it. Even if you want to go to a social event, say an office party, and you think, okay, I'd quite like to go, but a certain person's going to be there that you're not comfortable with. Even just tapping for their name. Say Nigel. Nigel comes to mind. We've got lots of Nigels in the UK. So. <laughs> Even though I, I want to go to this party, but I just can't handle Nigel. Or Nigel always criticizes me. Nigel makes me feel small. Just tapping through the FT points. Nigel, Nigel. And you'll feel all kinds of stuff come up in your body. You'll, you might yawn. That's always a good sign. Your eyes might water a bit. You might feel some anger. You might feel some discomfort. But if you do it for three to five minutes, at the end of that tapping, you can go sit right next to Nigel and you'll be like a nonstick pan. You're just not going to pick up anything from him. So EFT can be incredibly creative and wonderfully supportive when you really, really know how to work with it. And that's why we wanted to bring so many guided tapping sessions into this course so you can really get a feel for how to apply it thoroughly. Feel so much more calm and comfortable socially. I'm so glad we had this conversation. And I know that our listeners will be grateful to listen in as well. The, the timing around the holidays when social anxiety really kicks into gear. This is the time when you want to learn how to care for yourself and get through the holidays with as much grace and ease as possible. Once you know how to do this, you can clear painful memories, you can feel more calm and in the present in any situation, and you can learn exactly how to do that inside our course for social anxiety. Thanks for listening to Anxiety Slayer. We'll see you again next week.